this is Coach Marina Young, lifestyle entrepreneur and certified professional coach. And you are listening to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio hour and podcast. I believe it takes a mindset shift to take you to the next level in your career, your finances, relationships, health and fitness, or happiness. So, your journey to manifesting your goals and desires starts now. Transform your mind to transform your life. Welcome to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio hour and podcast. I'm your host, Coach Myrna Young, and in the guest chair today is Dr. Joe Nuzma. Dr. Joe is going to be talking to us today about how to protect yourself from the the coronavirus. Welcome, Dr. Joe. Thanks for having me on, Myrna. I really appreciate the opportunity to educate your listeners. Yes, and I really appreciate you because I know that I'm going to be definitely educated along with them. All right, now, before I tell you a little bit more about Dr. Joe, um, I just pulled up some information yesterday um, on the coronavirus update, and I just want to leave that with you. Um, the U.S. debt toll has climbed to more than 60 COVID-19 cases in the U.S. has suppressed 3,000, and there are more than 6,000 deaths worldwide. Federal Reserve cut interest rates to nearly zero, even though I understand that that doesn't transfer to mortgages. So how disappointing. (laughs) But whatever they're doing, they're cutting interest rates to zero. Um, Italy, I know, right? Italy reported 368 new coronavirus-related deaths on March the 15th, a 25% rise. Many U.S. retailers have cut hours or closed in the face of the virus. Spain reported that deaths from the coronavirus have more than doubled in a day to 288 with infections nearly 8,000. All these reports have produced fear. People are hoarding supplies. Events are being canceled. Corporations are asking workers to work from home and much, much more. So um, Dr. Joe is um, an expert on viruses, including the coronavirus. So, um, you know, I welcome him on the show today to, you know, expand our knowledge and what's going on because um, uh, without knowledge, then you just, you just live in fear. So let me tell you a little bit more about Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe is the fearless CEO and chief toxicologist at Superior Toxicology and Wellness, an international scientific consulting firm that he founded. For the past 30 years, Dr. Joe has been active in toxicology research. He's been able to improve water quality and remove carcinogens from treated water. He has assisted private clients to review their medical records and help them to eliminate unnecessary prescription drugs from their profile. As a member of the Scientific Advisory Board for Vitro Biopharma, Dr. Jill helped market stem stem cell-related products for diabetes, research to scientific, pharmaceutical, and ultimately medical markets. With an overwhelming options for better life, we are often left confused with many more questions than answers. So Dr. Joe provides solutions to our medical questions, giving us the power over our own health. So that's amazing. I see you've been in this business for over 30 years. So that's amazing. But um, uh, in your bio, um, as we mentioned before we, re- we started the recording, that it just talks about um, uh, you know, your company, um, Superior Toxicology and Wellness. So can you give us a background on how you um, uh, got into viruses and, and specifically your knowledge, how you got into understanding the coronavirus? 
sure. I'd be happy to do that for you. Um, basically, I've, I've been in toxicology for 30 plus years, and uh, my specialty is exposures, exposure scenarios that the human body must endure. And the exposure is the broad brush, and that could be chemical exposure, that could be pharmaceutical exposure, that could be exposure to electromagnetic radiation, that could be 5G, 4G, that could be biological exposure or mi microbial exposure. So the, the fact that I've specialized in exposure of the human body, that's where my expertise comes in for exposure to the biologicals, to bacteria, to viruses, to specifically the coronavirus. So in my past life, I've worked for different places like Dow Chemical, like uh, uh, Sando Pharmaceuticals, which was the generic wing for Novartis Pharmaceuticals. And prior to... Um, or after those stints with those major corporate America type entities, I opened my own practice and I've been going on my own uh, with superior toxicology and wellness because um, it basically uh, when I was in corporate America and someone asked me an opinion, I gave it to them. And it's very well uh, known that corporate America doesn't want anyone's opinion. They want people to do what they tell them to do. And so I noticed uh, that I just wasn't going to survive in corporate America. So I opened my own practice, and I've done very, very well helping with the pharmaceutical industry and in chemical exposures and basically taking care of people. Um, my full toxicological drive has always been worker exposure, worker protection, and I've always covered the, the safe amount of whatever it is someone's exposed to that, that can be safe before there's any risk of adverse effects, and that's pharmaceutical active ingredients, that's chemicals, that's biologicals, that's, you know, it could be protein antibodies, and, and so all of that experience stacks up where the the human body is exposed, the agent changes, but the principles remain the same. So the, the human body has a set amount of defense systems and exposure to this virus in particular, and when we get into talking about the specifics of the coronavirus, I'll go into that, is, is what's at stake here because there's a finite amount. And once they're gone, then that's where the damage starts kicking in, and that's where we see the problem with the coronavirus. But uh, I've always had the, the, the slant of let's protect our people, let's protect our loved ones, what can we do to minimize exposure? And the way I like to describe that, Myrna, is we live in a toxic soup of exposure. And let's say there's ten things that you're exposed to every single day that can hurt you. And if we were to eliminate one of those, are we better off? And, of course, the answer is yes. And that fits with removing carcinogens from the drinking water, improving the quality of drinking water, and that fits with helping people that are working in environments where chemicals are designed to have an effect on the human body, like the pharmaceutical industry, and it fits when people are facing a, a threat that is scary that most people don't understand, and it's super hyped in every media which you turn to for, for information, whether that's news, newspapers, magazines, or online sources, everybody has something to say about the coronavirus today, and it's, it's hard to sift and sort through what's fantastic and what's factual and what's relatable and what's applicable, and that's where we can hopefully get to today. Yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah, everybody's got them. It's not just the news. It's it's you go on Facebook and there's everybody is you know is talking about it because you know people like to join yeah. the party. People like to join. Everybody the party. is an expert. Now yes, I'm everybody is an expert. <laughs> no, I'm talking about well, it. I'm joining the party. Hopefully, I'll tell you what. I got a lot of years. Right. A lot of years of science and a PhD that says right. that, that uh, I know what I'm talking about, you know and you know it's, it's exactly. yeah. And it's it's funny. I like to back everything up I say with with the references and and citations and and uh, let people do their own research. So yeah, yeah. yeah we'll yeah. get to that too. Of course, not a problem. 
All right. Well, expanding on what you just talked about, and um, and I understand, I love the fact that you talk about exposure. You know, um, whether it's chemical, pharmaceutical. I had um, some guests on here talk about um, uh, um, radionics, which is exposure to, you know, um, uh, what you call Wi-Fi signals, and I, I know you mentioned right. the, the 5G, 5G and electromagnetic radiation, right. exactly, yeah. and all that. So um, let's let's you know. So that's great. So we understand um, how you know we get exposure to things, and I'm so. Obviously, now we're talking about um, stuff that's in the air, what you breathe. The air is, is um, exposure. So before you go into the coronavirus specifically, because I think it's the virus, of, the mother of all viruses, um, let's talk about um, like, like the flu or um, the common cold. Is the common cold a virus? I don't think so, right? Yes, it is. It is. It is. The, the, the common cold is actually in a classification called rhinoviruses, which is actually a, a, a subclassification of, a, of the coronavirus family. So they're all related. All right. They're all related. And, okay. uh, so my the, question the, is, um, yeah, when we're exposed to viruses, we are going to put the coronavirus in a separate category. You know, walk us through, um, you know, what, how does it operate in our bodies? Sure, I can do that. To, okay. to understand that, you have to know a little bit about viruses in particular, and this is generic information, not specific to anything. Right. Uh, a virus consists of a protein coat. It's a, the, the technical scientific word for it is a capsid. And this protein coat protects the genetic material which is inside the virus. And the two basic types of virus, you have DNA viruses and RNA viruses, but Regardless of the fact, they have genetic material and they have a protein coat that, that consists of multiple proteins. And this is collectively known as a viral particle. So that viral particle needs some sort of a pathway to attach to a host cell and get into a host cell. And uh, the virus is specifically designed for two things. It's designed to get into that host cell and it's designed to avoid getting eliminated. So uh, the way that that happens is that it, it has an interaction through a specific receptor, and with the coronavirus, that receptor is the ACE2 receptor. It stands for angiotensin converting enzyme 2, and we'll get into that when we talk about coronavirus, but that is the gateway for this particular virus to attach to the host cell and get all of the genetic material into that host cell because a virus on its own can't replicate. It needs to be in conjunction with a health host cell, and what the virus does, what all viruses do, is that host cell's replicating mechanism is hijacked by the virus. So instead of making more of the cell's genetic material for division, that cell machinery is hijacked to make copy after copy after copy after copy after copy of the viral genetic code. So then when that host cell is so loaded with viral particles, it virtually blows open and sends new viruses all over the body or that general microenvironment to find more host cells to find more ways for that virus to replicate. That's why if somebody is exposed to one virus particle, theoretically, that one virus particle could take somebody down. But it's like, yes, it's possible, but it's not probable because the virus that hijacks the cells and uses it to replicate will kill that cell. When that starts to happen, the body mounts a defense against those viruses. So it's a battle between can the virus replicate fast enough or the body take out the virus that's trying to overpower the defense mechanisms of the body. The defense mechanism of the body generically is called your immune system. Now, the immune system is this super complex organ system in your body that never gets enough credit. The immune system in the human body has the power to ruin your life, and it does that when it gets out of whack, yes, that's a scientific term, and starts attacking yourself. It's called autoimmune disease. And the delicate balance of keeping your immune system in check, but still powerful enough to battle against viruses or anything else that's attacking the human body, is the balance that 
is generically called wellness. So you can begin to see how everything is, is intertwined and it has to operate in an efficient manner. And when you get an attack by something like a virus, that virus hijacks the cells, makes a lot of itself, kicks it out, finds another cell, makes a lot of itself, kicks it out. And when it tips the balance that the virus is winning over the immune system, that's when you start to see symptoms of the viral illness. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense, but I'm sitting here thinking um, of movies that I see, like the Invasion of the Body Snatchers, where... <laughs> <laughs> well, a, vi a virus is a very... Right. If they want to attack hosts, they want to take them down, and they want to make yep. more of them. I mean, like... I was never that's a virus that. is a very, very small body snatcher. You're, that's a great comparison. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, so wow. as, as the body gets sick and ill, wow. Ill, the illness progresses, the body is spending all kinds of resources to try to fight the viral load, right. the, viral rec the, the viral replication, and it's right. also now trying to manage the symptoms of that illness. So that's how viruses work in general, and some of them are a lot more potent than others. Uh, and the, the way you intercede pharmacologically, that means fancy big word for saying how do you use drugs to attack the viruses, uh, well, you need an antiviral drug or a vaccine. And usually those types of drugs target those proteins that are in that protein coat that surround the genetic material, or they try to halt the viral replication in the cell. So the, what that is, is we'll sacrifice the one cell to stop the viral re replication. And if we're going after the protein coat, that's usually the targets of vaccines. And it's difficult to make a vaccine. That's why there's no cure for the common cold, because those proteins in that coat are continually and rapidly Changing. mutating. Yeah. Yes, the mu yep. mm -hmm. and that's why it's, always, it's a moving target, and you have to have something stable to develop a vaccine to fight that viral infection. And if the mutation rate is too fast, there's not a target that's around long enough to design that vaccine against. Does that make sense? It, it does, but they have a vaccine for the flu, influenza. Yes, they do. How did yep. that happen? And that one doesn't mutate? Well, the flu is different strains. So let's just, the, the way to describe this is let's say you have a bucket of flu viruses and there's a hundred different kinds in there. I don't know off the top of my head how many different types of flu there are, but mm -hmm. the flu vaccine is a, a couple of scientists, probably a whole room full of them, are looking at historic data about emergences of these different viruses historically over time, and they're trying to predict the best case scenario for which flu virus is going to break out and run through the human population in any given year. And what they do is they take the top three most likely to break out flu viruses and they formulate that season's oh, flu vaccine to those okay. three viruses. There's no guarantee that they're getting it right. There's no guarantee that it's going to be effective, and it's mm -hmm. always going to be a best guess scenario. It's still a good idea because more times than not, one of those flu viruses that they have in that mixture is going to be part of that season's mm. flu wow. epidemic. I now understand why you have to get it every year, too. So that's <laughs> yeah. good. Boy, I'm learning all kinds of stuff on here. And I also sure. understand, you know, we're going to take a break now, and then we're going to come back and talk about what everyone wants to know about the coronavirus. But in your monologue just now, you mentioned um, why the coronavirus, you know, you mentioned how, the vi how viruses work. And now I'm understanding why the people that are dying from the coronavirus so far are the elderly, with, you know, who are sick, people with compromised immune systems because the immune system can't fight it as fast as um, as um, their bodies are making these duplicates, so I get that. All right, so um, uh, we're going to take a break now, and when we come back, we're going to look specifically at how the coronavirus is different from these other viruses that did not cause a pandemic. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. 
When it comes to eating, natural is always best, and nothing is better than growing your own food. AncientPathNaturals.com is all about sustainability, and when it comes to growing mushrooms, they are the best. With AncientPathNaturals.com, you can enjoy mushrooms cultivated at home. They make it super easy for beginners to grow their morels year after year, right in their own backyard. They offer excellent quality customer service from knowledgeable people right at their facility, and they are always happy to help customers and answer any questions you may have. These are all organic ingredients with everything fully ready to use. There is no mixing or mess. 100% great grow guarantee. They have single, three, and five packs available. And morel patches will grow back larger every year. Visit their website right now to learn more. AncientPathNaturals.com 40 years of mushroom cultivation. Always organic, always sustainable. Here to help your grow go great. AncientPathNaturals.com In this season of the coronavirus pandemic, masks can save lives. There is a worldwide shortage of masks. I saw healthcare workers making their own masks. Chinabags.com has lots of disposable face masks available for sale for immediate delivery. Check out their N95 mouth mask that protects against dust, pollution, and germs. Their military-grade washable cotton mask, the KN95, has activated carbon filter and is a breathable mask for germ protection. Head over to Chinabag.com to order now. Wholesale quantities also available. That's C-H-I-N-A-B-A-G.com and stay protected during this pandemic. Are you looking for help starting your LLC in Atlanta? Family Trusts can help you. Laverne, the owner of Family Trust Virgin Hair Shop in South Atlanta, can help you get started on your LLC. She is offering you a free digital download with step-by-step instructions on how to form an LLC in Georgia. She can also show you how to start a business with zero dollar inventory, a secret no one wants you to know. Laverne started her business to raise money for the National Kidney Foundation after her mother suddenly died from renal kidney failure. Statistics show blacks are three times more likely to die from kidney failure because of the combination of high blood pressure and heart disease in our community. So take action now. This free download will only be available for a limited time. To get started, go to www.familytresses.com. That is F-A-M-I-L-Y-T-R-E-S-S-E-S.com under the Digital Business Academy. Do you need a loan or rent an apartment, but you don't have a credit score? Do you have a credit score, but it's low? I would like to tell you about an amazing free service offered by Kickoff, K-I-K-O-F-F. They build credit for free, no interest, no fee, no credit pull, no bank account or credit card required. Their customers who had zero credit were able to get a 600 plus credit score in 30 days. Kickoff is an official member of all three major consumer credit bureaus and will establish your credit history with all of them. It is a mission driven company backed by social impact investors. Credit building should be free and now it is. Build your credit and receive free credit scores at Kickoff's website today. That's Kickoff without the C. So, K-I-K-O-F-F dot com. That website again is K-I-K-O-F-F dot com. Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio hour and podcast. I'm your host, Coach Marnie Young, 
And in the guest chair today is Dr. Jill Musma, and we are talking about the coronavirus and viruses with the subtitle of How to Protect Yourself Against the Coronavirus. In our first segment, um, Dr. Joe um, explained to us how viruses work, um, and he talked about um, it. You know, it's one of the things we're exposed to. We're exposed to chemicals. We're exposed to pharmaceutical products. You know, all the. Um, I've learned a long time ago that um, you know pharmaceutical drugs are, are just as bad for you as the recreational ones. They're all bad for you. So, um, a biological virus. Um, so. A virus is something that we're exposed to. Um, so, um, and Dr. Joe, you know, gave us a very in-depth, um, detailed explanation of how it gets into your body, what it's designed to do, and what happens in your body when it's in there and how it replicates itself. Um, so from that, we understand generalization of viruses. But we all get the cold, you know. We understand the cold is a virus. We all get, you know, the flu. Um, and some of us might be, you know, um, sick for a couple of days or so, but we all get over it, you know. Actually, I take that back because one of the statistics that are coming out from this is that a lot of people die from the flu. But I don't know. It's not a pandemic. So um, my first question on the coronavirus to Dr. Jill is, what makes this one so deadly and so infectious? Separate it out for us, please. That's a great question, Myrna. And uh, if I had to answer it in one word, that mm -hmm. word would be infectivity. Mm. So basically the difference between the coronavirus, COVID-19, this year's poster child for pandemia, um, the, the, the amount of people that get this infection and how easily it spreads from person to person to person is the key that sets it apart from other coronaviruses like MERS and like SARS and other viruses like the flu virus, the herpes virus, the common cold virus, and, and even uh, Ebola virus or some of those hemorrhagic fever viruses. The, the, uh, the, the infectivity rate of the coronavirus, COVID-19, is much greater and much more aggressive than things that have been uh, available in the past or attacked the humans in the past. So in one word, it would be the infectious nature. So that's what uh, sets this one apart. But um, the reason that is, is because of the gateway that coronavirus gets into the, the host cells. It's, uh, it's the ACE2 receptor, angiotensin converting enzyme 2. So that is uh, part of the blood pressure controlling system where you have uh, different uh, tones of your blood vessels. Some make it bigger, some make it smaller, so it controls blood vessel. But the fact of the matter is, it's a very common receptors in humans, so you have these receptors on your heart, on your lungs, on your kidney, on your liver, on all of your blood vessels, and in a high propensity in your oral cavity, your mouth, your tongue, your cheeks, your throat, your airways. So whenever there is any viral particles, let's say somebody that gets less than six feet away from you sneezes and you can feel the droplets on your face. Well, you also have those droplets in your mouth and your throat and all of those droplets, if that person is infected, is just chocked full of coronavirus, and those viruses find those receptors in and around wherever they can get in your body and then start that process that we discussed in the last segment. Right. So wow. it's, it, it's that uh, angiotensin converting enzyme that is the key player. And early on in the Wuhan uh, province itself, they saw a lot of older male people succumbing to this virus. And as it turns out, that's because 
uh, smokers have a higher level of the ACE2 receptors. Smoking mm -hmm. will generate more of that receptor to be expressed on your cell surfaces. So when the, the propensity of the Chinese culture, the males tend to be chain smokers, that could be a stereotype, and I'm very sorry if someone's offended, but right. that's the reason in the beginning of the, the breakout that they saw the population statistics as they were, but they then figured it out that it's getting in the ACE2 inhibitors and that uh, it, it concentrated in the older folks because the, the, the younger folks aren't uh, as prolific in their smoking habits yet, and so it's that type of thing that... Uh, separated out that population. So, so what happens then with the coronavirus when we progress to further on, and I'll just I'll quickly cover this, is mm -hmm. that um, the, the, the virus invokes an inflammation response. So what happens is the virus gets in and it triggers your immune system. Your immune system calls for the cavalry. And the cavalry consists of chemokines and cytokines. Chemokines are chemicals in your body that when they get to a local area of infection or irritation or assault, then they put out the word for more cavalry. That's your macrophages, that's your T cells, that's your B cells, and all of your other leukocytes, your white blood cells, come rushing to wherever this uh, space is that this attack is going on. And the cytokines, the, that's the interleukins, you know, your inter interleukin-2, your interleukin-4, your interleukin-8, things like interferon and those types of things. Those are the big medical words that uh, people throw out that nobody has any idea what they mean. And what it means is your body is mounting a massive inflammation response to try to kill whatever is there. In this case, it's the coronavirus. Will an inflammation reaction by your body kill the coronavirus? Yes, absolutely it will. Otherwise, everybody would be dead already. And there's more people recovering from coronavirus than there are dying. You've got to keep that in mind. The numbers they report are the it's death. Very low. Right. They don't mm -hmm. report yeah. the number of people that have, uh, have survived it. So the right. body can do something to get rid of this, and that's the inflammation response. Now, the problem is the things that go awry is that when your, your immune system gets completely overzealous and calls in everything it has to, to launch an inflammation reaction that's bigger than it needs. It loses the breaking mechanism, if you will, and what you have is called a cytokine storm. And that cytokine storm produces such an inflammation reaction that it runs through your cellular protective mechanisms. And the buzzwords for that is glutathione, glycine conjugation, uh, glucuronide conjugation. All of these cellular protective mechanisms run out. And then when that runs out, these reactive oxygen species go crazy in this inflammation response, and it calls in even more people. And to get all of these cells in that in that localized area, your blood vessels get leaky, I guess, the best way to describe that, so that uh, fluid can come into that site to support the inflammation reaction. And mm. with all of the ACE2 receptors in your lungs and having this be an inhaled virus, the lungs is a prime spot for this massive inflammation reaction. And when all this fluid comes into your lungs, you basically drown in your own secretions. And if you're wow. lucky enough to survive that onslaught, then the next thing that's attacked is the heart. And you get massive uh, attack on your heart, and you, can get ma and you can get multiple organ failure over a very short period of time if the person is going into cytokine storm because of the coronavirus infection. It's a very bleak picture. It's very painful. And the people have to have very intense, resource-intensive medical care if they're going to have a chance to survive. And what they've seen in the population statistics are the people at the greatest risk are the people that are 70 years old or older, or those that have pre-existing medical conditions, respiratory effects, cardiac effects, um, those types of, of folks with those types of medical problems are particularly at risk. And those are the ones that should absolutely adhere to every one of the guidelines being put out. Stay away from crowds. Keep your hands washed. 
uh, you know, just do not touch any common surfaces where, where this infection could be because they have the least amount of capacity to fight and survive this particular viral infection. Wow. Wow, I learned so much from that. This is amazing. So I have a few um, round of, you know, questions. So the first thing you mentioned is that we've got this ACE2 receptors. So, and you said that the coronavirus um, infectabil infecti infectability is very high. Does that mean that if I come into, it, it infects everyone? That's basically what I'm saying. Because sometimes somebody can be in your house and have the flu and you don't get it. So is, is, is what, you're, what I'm understanding is anyone that sneezes on you to have the coronavirus, you're going to catch it. What, is, what, are, what, are, what are the odds? Uh, the, you know, that's tough to say because it depends. And a good toxicologist okay. answers every question with it depends. And that depends on how healthy you are. That depends on uh, how good that's is your diet. I wanted to find out. So it isn't, yeah. it, it isn't automatic because you're saying this virus no. is so potent. Okay, so you, you can the, 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 the thing about and you don't get it because you're healthy, like the kids. Apparently kids are not right. getting it. Is that what's going on there? <laughs> Exactly, and you can have an infection with the coronavirus and be symptom-free. Some people are saying up to 14 days. I've seen some evidence that suggests it could be 24 to 28 days without mm -hmm. symptoms. And, but what's going on at that time is there's a fight raging in your body between the virus and the immune system. If the mm -hmm. immune system wins, then, then that person right. never shows symptoms but still was infected. And they can also so that's the, be, um, they can also give it to people too. Contagious. Understanding. Yes, Contagious. exactly. And the other um, thing, I mean, what you hear repeatedly in the media is that uh, you got to be careful because this virus can live for two or four days on surfaces. I've seen evidence that it's up to nine, nine days on wow. surfaces. So wow. think about this as you grab the grocery cart handle, as yeah, you grab I've the gas wiped, pump I've handle. Been I've been I've been wiping As down you grab the, the pole. Uh, the, yeah, I've been wiping down my car. Yeah. I pump gas. I didn't have any wipes. They don't provide wipes at the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. Didn't my well, car. I mean, it's right. And yeah. then, after yeah. touching those services, how many times do you scratch your nose, touch your eye, put your fingers in your mouth? <laughs> yes. Exactly. I don't have my fingers in my mouth, but I do touch my face. Yeah. All right. Yes. So I just wanted to get from that that you can come into contact with this thing. But you, if your immune system is strong, then you're not going to get it. So a whole, you know, it's not um, automatic. Okay, so that was my first question. And, and then the, um, uh, the second question that I had from what you mentioned there is, um, uh, um, uh, the, yeah, so this is a gateway. Um, I forgot what my question was. But, all right, so... Um, <laughs> But we're, we're, what you're saying is that you're agreeing with um, uh, the premonition that the older people that are over 70 plus have medical condition, the, uh, the bacteria is going to win against their immune system because it can't put up this big old fight, right? The, the inflammation response. And I also, exactly. want to, right, I also want to confirm, because I'm hearing they're saying that it affects your lungs and it fills it up with fluids. So you explain how yes. that happens. So you, get, you can get fluid in your heart, too? How, how does it affect your heart? Well, the, the uh, massive attack of, of, of um, uh, reactive oxygen species would just get in there and uh, uh, disrupt cellular function. So you would, you would screw up the mitochondria, you would screw up the cellular respiration, the energy production that uh, would keep those cells beating in the myocytes. That's a fancy word for heart cells. So when you get in there and you, and you absolutely foul up the cellular biochemistry, then bad things happen. The result is your heart just stops. Okay. So, so. people die from both things, one or the other, or both. 
Exactly. Yes. Uh, it, 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 it okay. could, yes, one or the other or both. Uh, most of the time it's the lung reaction which is, is taking out a lot of these at-risk um, folks. But if they, if they are able to survive that, then something else gets them. And that's why they show those videos in Wuhan, Wuhan about people just, you know, they're standing there seemingly fine and all of a sudden fall over dead. I didn't see that. It's I saw the, that in the movie Contagion. I did not see that yeah. at once. <laughs> well, that's the that's the multiple organ failure that just I mean wow. your your body runs out of of supplies to fight the fight and uh, the uh, oxidative stress takes over and it wins and mm -hmm. it's just uh, okay. it's massive internal failures and and that's what is the cause of death. So it's, All right, I just remembered my question. So let's say someone has the coronavirus, their lungs are filling up. Uh, you know, this thing is attacking, you know, all their cells, and they go into a hospital. Um, the hospital tries to, you know, get rid of the coating thing and try to, to stop the virus from replicating, and that's how... Well, what they... What the hospital has to do is they have to stabilize the patient first. So you're going to immediately get put into uh, intensive care unit. You're going to be intubated, which means you're going to be put on a breathing machine so that uh, it takes your lungs out of the equation to get oxygen into your blood because the blood is what carries oxygen to the rest of the vital organs, the heart, the kidneys, the liver, and the brain. Mm -hmm. And if your lungs are filled up with fluid and can't make that uh, oxygen exchange onto the blood, then everything else is going to shut down really fast. So it's a, it's a race against time to make sure that they can stabilize those patients if they're that far down the pathway of the cytokine storm and the, and the viral reaction. So if they can do that, then they need to start addressing the viral load. And, and they, there are some pharmacotherapies for that. They've, they have found that uh, a cocktail of AIDS drugs and drugs for malaria are showing some promise to stop the coronavirus from replicating. So the AIDS drugs, because uh, HIV is also a virus, and yeah. uh, they have a lot of protease inhibitors in that, and they're finding some crossover. So that's a good thing. And then the, okay. the other case was the, the uh, malaria drugs. It's uh, chloroquine and methylchloroquine are showing some promise that they are interfering with the cellular replication of the virus. So that's just brand new in the last couple of days that I saw that, and that's very promising that it, it, it possibly can get a toehold with something that, uh, that can be... Uh, given in the hospital therapeutically for these people that give them another little bit of a fighting chance. So, wow. Okay. So that's good. So, yeah. so what's your prognosis, knowing what you know? <laughs> can, we, um, can, we, can we, if we, you know, what they're doing now is they're, um, uh, they're cutting down on people <laughs> congregating because this thing is so infectious. You're right. You can be carrying the disease and you don't even know. Oh, that's scary. What? Just none it of is, that. Well, it is scary. That. Yeah, and I just but repeat it, that, and it's scary. Um, <laughs> because I'm thinking that I'm looking for someone that has a cough, but you're saying that you don't need, they don't even have to show symptoms. You know what I mean? That's correct. Um, they can just yes. touch me or shake my hand or something. All right. So, right. Well, um, and a lot of times it, it's the during flu season you stop shaking hands. You know, you you right. do the fist bump or the elbow touch. Or I've even right. seen a video where people are are tapping their feet. Yeah, so right. you know, you, China, you're good. getting creative to hmm. avoid that human touch of the traditional handshake. But um, the infectivity is the difference with the coronavirus, and it's going to spread, and it's going to get into people that uh, would normally um, think that they are candidates for viral infection. However, if the global death rate is still around 3.8 percent the last time I calculated it, what that means is 96 percent of the people are still going to get better. So keeping our eye on the ball that 98% of the people or 96% of the people are going to get better, yes, it's still a lot of people that are going to die, and yes, it absolutely sucks if it's somebody close to you, one of your loved ones, or, or if, if coronavirus touches your inner circle. But in the whole scheme of things, there are better killers. Ebola virus kills more of its victims. 
flu virus can kill more of its victims. And uh, the coronavirus, you have to protect yourself against infection. The best defense is avoiding infection in the first place, and that's barrier protection. That's avoiding the crowds. That's keeping your, your common areas uh, clean. That's uh, washing after you touch common areas. And it's just not doing anything stupid. And when you look over the course of humanity, that's the most difficult thing in the world to regulate is telling a population don't do anything stupid. I mean, look at the toilet paper scarcity right now. That's just stupid. And people just can't get away from that. And you've got to ask yourself, yeah. is this a rational action or yeah. is this stupid? I don't stupid? even know how that started. I heard that on the radio. <laughs> and then every, anybody you know, somebody saying they're out of toilet paper. And somebody, I just, I, I actually don't get it. I would think that if you're going to be quarantined, you look for food. There's still food on the shelves, but there's no toilet paper. I happen to get a whole bit 45 roll before the madness started, so I'm good. <laughs> but I mean, well, I'll tell you, yeah, and I, I have a theory. I need hydrogen peroxide because I had a, I have a, um, an abscess and I wanted to use it to dry it out. And I went to right. every store, and they were gone. And I says, well, what are they doing with hydrogen peroxide? <laughs> well, they, yeah. they don't have hand sanitizer, so they're using that. So, yeah, it's, um, um, it's, 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 yeah. It's crazy. Right. It's absolutely yeah. crazy. And I think, yeah. I think my theory on that is it has to do with supply lines and, and people thinking that everything in the world is now produced in China. And when China got oh. sick and they, uh, the boats were coming out empty and there was going to be a lag, and that's what started the panic. I don't think they think that far because I never even thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about it is China's already going back to work, so the, the, all of those supply lines are going to be repaired, and it's, it's, it's a small little speed bump in manufacturing lore, and it, it, it's why toilet paper was picked, I don't know. It's just it's silly. But um, the other thing you can do... Something must have come out to tell them, like, you know how you have hurricane supplies, that someone said this is, this is what you need for the virus. Someone has to put that out because it's massive. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's possible. It's very possible. Yes, but the, right. but the yeah, other yeah. thing you can do personally mm -hmm. to try to avoid infection is make sure you're in top physical condition. You know, I mean, just right. make sure you're getting the easy things. Make sure you're hydrated. Right. Make sure that you're getting enough sleep, and make sure that you're eating a good diet. You know, not a bunch of processed crap. It's it's uh, the way I like to say is uh, the the mantra about diets is eat half and mostly plants, and you're going to be okay. You're going to get yeah, what well, you was, need from your diet. Right. right. So that basically how I wanted to um, uh, to end the show in the third segment is to talk about wellness because I know you're part of it. I listened to Deepak Trooper talk about it as well. So, yeah. Yep. So let's take our second break right now. When we come back, we're going to leave you with some positive news. <laughs> well, yeah, I have two things that I want to share in the, in the world of wellness, and uh, right. that'll be great. Right. Okay. All right. Don't go anywhere. We are going to be right back. Hello, everyone out there. Just wanted to take a brief moment to share with you a major credit secret that most people are not even aware of that can help you with your credit needs. In this day and age, I think we all know how important good credit is and how credit is tied to everything we do, from buying a house, a car, a job, an apartment, insurance, virtually Everything comes down to your credit history. The problem is, many of us have made mistakes or just run into circumstances beyond our control dealing with credit. The good news is that secondcreditprofile.com can help you legally establish a new personal or business credit profile. This is the biggest secret that credit agencies don't want you to know about. I encourage you to check out secondcreditprofile.com for more information. That is S-E-C-O-N-D-C-R-E-D-I-T-P-R-O-F-I-L-E.com. 
We all use Facebook and Messenger to keep in touch. But the problem with these apps is that they're heavy on the data. So what happens sooner or later is that you run out of free space and you have to delete some stuff, like your favorite photos and videos. So this is where the app called Mackie shines. Mackie is a single app with both Facebook and Messenger, and it is also more than 10 times smaller. And that's not all. Mackie also allows you to remove Facebook ads in your newsfeed. Plus, protect your eyes at night with dark mode. Search for Mackie, that is M-A-K-I, in the Google Play to get it for free now. Or use the link on the show page, blog.myhelps.us, to download. Hi, my name is Shaniqua, and I am the proud owner of Sunny Hair Care. This is an organic line aimed to promote and maintain healthy hair in the African-American community. I personally hand fill and label each bottle to perfection just for you guys. Please check out my website at sunnyhairproducts.myshopify.com and please follow us on Instagram at sunnyhaircare. Thank you. Welcome back to Transform Your Mind, to Transform Your Life, Radio Hour and Podcast. And boy, do we have an episode for you today. We are speaking to Dr. Jill Musma, and he is educating us on the coronavirus, viruses on the whole, and boy, I mean, after you've listened to this episode, I'm sure that you're going to be so well informed. You understand the scary part. You understand the infectability of the coronavirus, how it works, what makes it so deadly, how it affects your lungs and your heart and your systems um, with the response and um, the fact that it can live in surface surfaces for nine days and, you know, all the other stuff that Dr. Cho talked about. So, on a positive note, um, yeah, you heard him say, <laughs> you heard Dr. Joe say that someone can sneeze on you, cough on you with the coronavirus, and as, as much as it's got all this infectability and it's wanting to replicate itself, you know, it wants to take over your host. That is its purpose. If you are healthy, then your immune system is going to fight it off. So how can you be healthy? So I was listening to Dr. Deepak Chopra give advice on the coronavirus. He's one of my mentors on Facebook a few weeks ago, and he talked about having a healthy lifestyle that included meditation, exercise, nutrition, etc., as a shield to the coronavirus. And Dr. Joe also has, you know, his practice about healthy lifestyle. So Dr. Joe, tell us about um, uh, your wellness program. I know you also have um, something you want to share with us from your website and how you, how, you know, you can, yeah, you can build up that immune system. So, um, uh, <laughs> yes, <go ahead. laughs> absolutely. I'll, I'll start by saying that, uh, that Dr. Chopra has good advice. You know, the, the meditation is, is tremendous. It's uh, the power of the mind is is unlimited, and what people can think, they can do, and what people think, both positive and negative, will come to manifest. So you absolutely have to have a positive outlook, and you have to be thinking about how you want things to be, not how you dread things could be. And that difference sheds a light on your entire life. All aspects of your life are affected by positive thinking. And just making sure you're always looking for that silver lining. I can't stress that enough. That's excellent advice. And the exercise, the exercise promotes a healthy body. It helps you to eliminate toxins. It helps you to, it gives your body an avenue to eliminate things that, 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 that breathes in, that it eats in, that it absorbs through whatever it comes in contact with. And that exercise, it increases your body temperature and it produces the sweat and it increases the circulation to the lymph system, which is your garbage disposal in the body. So all of those types of things will also help to eliminate toxins. And that, that exercise gives you the, the, the sense of well-being where 
uh, at least for me, when I'm physically tired, I'm mentally sharp. Oh, and okay. uh, that's why I try to do something active every day. And nutrition, like I said right before the break, you know, eat half and mostly plants, and you're going to be okay. There's, um, there's actually some new research out that shows uh, after going 90 days on a vegan diet that you change the transcription of 500 different genes in your body, some of them for promoting wellness and others for preventing disease. And it's just unlocks your body's ability to, to engage with the consciousness of the universe. And uh, I haven't been able to do it because, you know, I like my ribeye way too much. But I have some friends of ours that have done this, and it's amazing the transformation that I've watched in these folks. So, you know, meditation, exercise, nutrition are all super important. But right here, right now, what can you do to battle that virus besides the staying away from people, washing your hands, making sure nobody sneezes on you. Well, you can give your immune system the building block that needs to function optimally. And the, the one product that, that I have found that does that, and I've written a paper for, uh, for non-scientific people and for scientific people, and you can find it on the website from Dr. Joe Newsma. It's called C60 Complete, and you can find it at LiveLongerLabs.com. And what this is, is it's, it's carbon-60, which is the world's most efficient antioxidant. Having carbon-60 on board can help to stop that cytokine storm that happens when, you're, when your inflammation response goes haywire. And the other two ingredients in C60 Complete are black seed oil and curcumin. And those two are very powerful natural products that have been around for centuries in the herbal medicine circles. And when you Google carbon-60, black seed oil, and curcumin, you come up with 28,000 papers on PubMed, which is the, the NIH's scientific database for papers. And you can read all about it yourself. You don't have to take my word for it at all that this particular product called C60 Complete from Live Longer Labs, it's the closest thing to the fountain of youth that I have wow. ever seen on the market. Wow. So uh, that, that supplement, I take it every single day, and I stand by it. I feel great, and uh, it's just a matter of making sure your body has the tools it needs to do what it needs to do. And with the anti-inflammatory um, and uh, antioxidant effect of the C60, what the product does is it squelches oxidative stress everywhere in your body, so the bucket of resources that your body was firefighting the oxidative stress with, which is a side effect of breathing, so everybody has it, is now able to be reallocated to different areas of the body, and the body knows where the, where the worst case fight is going on, and it, it allows the body to do what the body is designed to do, which is heal. So uh, in the face of the coronavirus, yeah. the C60 Complete is, is one of the best things you can do. And then if you're one of those folks that are on, on really multiple drug products, the other program that I like to say is on my website. It's called superiortoxicology.com, and you click on the HOPE button. HOPE stands for Health Optimization Prescription Evaluation. And for those folks that are on multiple drug products and think they have no way out of that polypharmacy because one doctor put them on one thing and the next doctor put them on the next thing and the third doctor put them on something else and none of those doctors took the time to look at what they were already on, I'll do that for you. I'll be that pharmaceutical advocate and give you the questions that you can ask your doctors to say, do I really need to be on these drugs? Why am I on it? Prove to me that I need to be on it. Because if you can eliminate the drugs and give your body what it needs to function optimally, you're going to give yourself the best case scenario to fight off these pandemics. This year it's coronavirus. Before it was yeah. SARS, before it was MERS, before it was uh, Ebola virus, it's always something. Yeah. Something's going to kill humanity about every two years. Wow. And if we can just survive that, you know, the two months where it's the buzzword, we can go back to enjoying our life, enjoying our loved ones, and trying to be around as long as we can. Because ultimately, a victory in this world is living long enough to become a complete pain in the ass to your children. 
<laughs> well, that is not what I hope to become. <laughs> but all right, so that, 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 was, that was awesome. All right. So um, we're coming to the end of your show. So um, you ha- what is your website? My website is superiortoxicology.com. And that's where okay. you can find that hope button okay. for the polypharmacy. Yep. Okay. Superiortoxicology.com. All right. Well, um, listeners, you can head over to um, blog.myhelps.us. You will get a transcript of um, this episode because I know you missed some things. So now you're able to read about it. <laughs> you're going to get a link to, um, uh, to Dr. Joe's website as well as, um, I guess I'll add a link to the LiveLongerLabs.com. Cause it's not on your site, sure. right? So, yeah. uh, it, it, I, I told the guy that makes my website to put it there, but I haven't checked yeah. to see if it is there. Right, yeah. So, okay. yeah. yeah, all right. So I'll, I'll also link into that. I think I will get that myself for, for myself and my mom because my mom is 82. I would highly we're, recommend it. We were definitely yeah. worried about how she was supposed to head home to Toronto and we're not sending her on a plane. Because, like you said, yep. you know, she is in that group. All right, so I will definitely get that. Oh my gosh, this has been so enjoyable. Um, I think I think I was in school. You gave so much information. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like drinking from a fire hose. And, and Marnie, if you get such a response that uh, that we need to follow up and come back, I'm happy to do it. Sure. Yeah. No. 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 You you didn't say it's like it's a medical journal. You said it so that I can understand. So, but my point is, you give a lot of information, and um, uh, anyone that's listening, like I said, they might have missed something, and um, uh, so that's why you know, head over to the the show page and um, and um, you can get a transcript and also click Dr. Joe's website so that you can get some more information. Um, so that was so, thank you so much for spending the time um, to talk to us today. And you're right, it was like drinking on a fire hose. You're passionate, you know your stuff. <laughs> well, I had fun. I, 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 it's, I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to be on your show. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, guys. So we've come to the end. I, I'm, you know, if you like the content of the show, then basically all I ask you to do is um, review, rate and review it so that more people can hear and listen and share with your friends. This is one of the episodes that you're going to want to definitely share. Really, really good information on here. So stay safe. You know, if you take anything from this is understanding the 14 days when someone is is not showing any symptoms, they can still be infectious. Oh my gosh, that is so sad. So, yeah, um, just be just be careful and um, pray, and also institute some of those wellness you know activities. You know, I meditate, I walk a 5K every day, and I have actually started doing um, a, a plant day based with just a little bit of meat. Um, because I was pre-diabetic, so I'm trying to get rid of the facts from my cells, and that's one way to do it. But in the end, it's, it should make my um, my um, immune system a little strong, right? Right, Dr. Joe? Absolutely, it will, and C60 will help with your pre-diabetes because it resets how your body does with insulin, but that could be a whole different show. Nice. Yes. Let's do that one next. Okay. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, listen, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, namaste.